Ciao, I'm Mario, the Swiss car guy on YouTube, and today I'm standing here on a sort of warm November day, squinting into the sun, because I think I've had enough. If you sort of watch my channel regularly, you will have figured out that I haven't been releasing a lot of videos lately, and uh, to be honest, I think three cars it's getting a bit complicated because the Cadillac is constantly leaking no I cannot fix it yet I will try to glue it let's not talk about it right now the Pontiac is still not really watertight so I cannot really wash it um, the Lexus works the wheels are ugly but it works and all of this it, it doesn't just take time to fix the issues it takes time to research the issues so this has been quite time consuming and therefore it has taken up a lot of my free time and for that reason i have not been willing to do a lot about it so um i've done the only reasonable thing a car guy would do and no i didn't sell any of the cars yet nope I bought another car because if three cars are a problem four cars are still a problem yeah because you see a while ago I sold my Nissan GTR because it was too large and too fast for Switzerland and uh, I wanted to get a smaller sports car but the market back then was crazy so I didn't buy anything and um, um, that was like one and a half years ago and now it's November it's almost winter which I reckon is the best time to buy a sports car so I did and what did I buy you might ask well make sure to watch the next episode of the Swiss car just kidding um, I'm just gonna show it the car is right here next to me so let's turn the camera around oh yes it's a Cockster all right a 2008 Porsche Cayman S or as Clarkson called it, the Cockster. And you see, it has nice 19 inch turbo wheels on it, which were factory option for this car. It is specced in a very boring silver color, but I mean, it's at least easy to keep clean because right now the car is very dirty and it doesn't look that way. Here we have the car's piece de resistance, as I call it, the back, the ugliest part of the car. Because yes, I bought a car I think is ugly. And the rear of this car, uh, never really did it for me but I didn't buy this car because of its looks I bought it you know in order to drive it for the driving experience but also the back while ugly the good thing is it has you know a hatch so there's a little trunk back here that holds a bit of stuff and it also of course has a frunk let's check it out The front in this car is surprisingly spacious because, you know, I have a bag in there and more stuff, but you could possibly get a large suitcase in it, which is better than my old 996 Turbo, I think, because that car had differential and stuff, and therefore it has less space. Then again, much of the space it has in addition here is taken up by this thing, which, you know, I think it contains the navigation unit and whatever but you can still put things in here so there is a lot of space to put things and also tools down here it's kind of useful now you might ask why did you buy a co i mean a, a cayman well because i wanted a small sports car and this pretty much is a small sports car also this is a 2008 and it has 142,000 kilometers and um, the reason I bought this car, there are two reasons, but the second is that it's in very, very good condition. I mean, it has hardly any blemishes, any damages on the paint. The wheels, the wheels have no curbs. They are like perfect, no curb rash at all. And also it has Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, which I think are great tires. And it shows that the previous owners took care of the car. And look at also inside. Even the inside is basically immaculate. So this car only has like very few blemishes. And if I want to make one of my classic videos, here's basically everything that's wrong with this car. Um, there are some scuffs 
here. Um, yeah, there are some scuffs here. The Alcantara on the seat is, you know, a bit dirty. I don't know. It's when the Alcantara is not super fluffy. Um, yes, that. And then um, then, then there, there's nothing. The this car is basically right now is good. It has nothing. Also, there is donkeys back here. Donkey, hello. But now I already hear you screaming IMS, the intermittent shaft bearing, which is a bearing that's in the engine that's known to fail and cause catastrophic engine failure. Yes, this car has an IMS, but this car has an uprated IMS from the factory. And on these cars, the IMS do not tend to fail. So that's not really an issue. So I'm good on that. But then, you might say, oh, Mario, 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 what about bore, bore scoring? scoring. Oh, yes, because the Cayman S's, the 3.4 liters, they have a tendency to score the cylinders, which is um, bad. They start to drink a lot of oil. And then um, at some point you have to basically open up the engine and redo the whole thing or replace it. Uh, yes, this is an issue, especially on high mileage cars like this one, because 141, 442 thousand kilometers, that's quite a lot. However, this car, and I don't know, for many people this would not be a positive thing, for me it is. Because this car had catastrophic engine failure about 2000 kilometers ago. The previous owner was driving and then all of a sudden everything came on and um, yeah, he drove it to the, the Porsche dealership, or I think he had it towed anyway, and um, they replaced the engine. The rump engine had to rebuild the whole rest. It was a good thing the car was under warranty back then, because the car had a Porsche approved warranty. And um, even though the car was under warranty, since the damage was so extensive, the engine work was so expensive, the previous owner has had to pay six thousand francs of his own money to have the car fixed because the Porsche warranty would only pay um, the value of the car at that time and I reckon the job they did on this car was over 20,000 francs and um, yeah yeah so a, a Porsche with a broken engine is definitely not worth 20,000 francs especially not a Coxa I mean a Cayman S like this one and uh, yeah he had to pay out of pocket and this is also the reason why this car was relatively expensive. Because you see, this is a 15 year old Porsche Cayman with 140,000 kilometers. This car should be cheap and it wasn't. Because I spent 24,000 Swiss francs on this car, which is much for one of these. I, th I reckon the car if the engine work had not been done in original condition, a car like this wouldn't be worth more than 20,000 francs. So I paid a premium in order to have the car with a rebuilt engine. And not only is the engine rebuilt, but I still have a year of warranty on the engine because it was done a year ago and there's two years of warranty by Porsche. So I have a warranty on the engine, which makes me sleep a little easier. Other than that, the car is in really great condition and I think we should take it out for a drive. So how is it to drive? Well, in the past one and a half years, I've only been driving like big barges like my Lexus, my Cadillac, my Pontiac. And uh, this car is a welcome um, departure from that because, well, this is a proper sports car. It's mid-engine, which I like. It's the first mid-engine car I've ever owned. And uh, it has quite a torquey engine. And the first time I was driving this car around, I, I was thinking to myself, wow, this is quite a, a torquey little engine. And then I realized, well, but it's a 3.4 liter. It's not actually that small. I mean, it's small. It's larger than most people in Switzerland will ever have an engine in their car. So um, yeah, no wonder it's torquey. The car is not that light. It is about 1,500 kilos, so one and a half tons. And, um, that's because this is based on a convertible. This is based on the Boxster and 
basically what they do they just add a roof which means the car doesn't get much lighter because convertibles are usually reinforced in order for them not to flex when because they don't have a roof so what they did adding a roof to this car is basically just it made it really stiff and you can feel it because this is a 15 year old car but actually it doesn't rattle it doesn't do anything it, it feels solid it feels like a piece of granite to be honest my Nissan GTR, for example, it would squeak and rattle um, quite often, um, and this feels like a, another level. I don't know, and I don't think this is more rigid than a GTR, but it certainly seems to be sort of better built because it has held up really well. And uh, as I said, it doesn't make a lot of rattles and squeaks. The engine, while being quite torquey, has also um, a nice top end. So uh, from a li like 5,000 RPMs, it develops like a second bit of boost. It's like VTEC basically. And I think it's ha it has to do with variable valve timing and stuff. And it sounds quite all right. Personally, I think Porsches tend to sound quite terrible because to me they always sound like Beatles because that's what they are in the end and uh, this one it sounds quite all right it has a nice ring to it it's not too loud this car does not have the sports exhaust in fact this car is quite a low spec car it's something I usually wouldn't buy because I like the fully optioned out cars and this car has almost nothing as far as optionals go I think the only thing it has is the PCM system so the navigation unit from 28 so it's 15 year old navigation it's useless um, the previous owner had like a Dention a Gateway 500 Bluetooth installed so he could connect his phone it also has Bluetooth streaming and USB but um, I think it doesn't work I haven't been able to work it out and even the phone function is not really that good the phone sound is really really distorted so um, of course I already ordered a new radio from Aliexpress and I will be replacing this thing here from the past so the only valuable option this car had I'm going to replace so great um, then what does the car has oh it has home link has garage door opener which actually works perfectly I've been able to, to pair it to my uh, garage door at home, to my mom's place, to the garage door for the other place where I keep the other car and it all worked, which is fantastic. And then, um, 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 what does it have? It has Sound Package Plus, which is not the highest sound system available because the highest sound system was the Bose. And this car does have the Sound Package Plus. I reckon it might be standard on the S models, I'm not sure, but to be honest, I kind of like it. It sounds quite all right. Um, without the subwoofer, it sounds surprisingly bassy. In fact, I had to tweak it and turn stuff around. Um, the highs don't seem too great, but you know, I will, I will make better comparisons once I replace the radio because the, the Chinese radio I bought on Express, of course, it has DSP and, and good equalizer and everything. And I reckon I will be able to get some sound quality out of it. But even as this is not that bad. The thing is just right now I'm stuck either listening to CDs or the radio or use the AUX because it has an AUX. Um, that also works, but I hate it. So I can't wait for the radio to arrive. Otherwise, options-wise, well, it doesn't have an extended leather package, it doesn't have Sports Chrono, which is the little stopwatch in the dash, which I don't really see a need for. Uh, it doesn't have the PASM, which is the Porsche Adaptive Suspension Management, and, uh, which I honestly do not miss, because this car, I think it rides really well. It's firm, but it's not harsh. It, it's firm, you know, because you know you're in a sports car, you know that the body's very stiff, but it's not crashy. And that's in stock contrast to the GTR I had before, because that was, you know, that was very crashy and really harsh, first generation GTR. And uh, this, in comparison, is much more manageable. But now you might say, Mario, this car is a manual, and you don't like manuals. Yes, I still don't like manuals, but, 
I'd rather have a manual sports car than one with a torque converter or automatic, especially an old one, because they just kill every joy out of the car. So I bought this car with a manual. I would have bought a PDK one, but the PDK ones here were only available from the facelift 2009 onwards, and those cars were considerably more expensive. And it's rumored that these cars are, do not suffer from the bore scoring issues, but uh, I wouldn't bet on it because in the end, these are still Porsche boxers. They sh still use the same alu-sill plating, so I'm not uh, that sold on it. And the newer car, being a direct injection engine, this is indirect injection, also have the typical soot problem. So uh, everything soots up and needs to be cleaned periodically. This one, being a indirect injection, doesn't have that issue. But back to the manual gearbox, this is a six-speed. And um, despite me not being a fan of manual gearboxes, I kind of like this one because the gear changes are, you know, chunky. They are not too long. It is precise. Compared to the BMW Z4 M I drove a while ago, this is much, much better. It's much more pleasurable to change gears, especially also because the gear stick has the, the front is in, is in metal. So it, it's, it's nice to touch. And um, again, it's a nice short, short-ish throw. It doesn't have a short shift on it. And it's very positive. It's very easy to engage. The only thing I don't like is that reverse gear is forward left. So I am sometimes in reverse and think I'm in first and then the car goes the wrong way. So this could end badly. This is something I don't like. Otherwise, the gearbox, I think, is quite good. The pedals, though, I think they are not arranged in a way that you can heel and toe in normal driving because the brake pedal is way too high compared to the clutch. So you can basically only heel and toe if you really brake hard which is probably the only time you should heel and toe, but if you are not on a track, you're never gonna break this hard. So, yeah, 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 and it can be done, it can be done. And um, yeah, I don't mind the gearbox. I mind the clutch a little, because the clutch is certainly much easier than on the 996 Turbo I used to have, because that one was uh, servo assist, it was bare of any feel whereas this one is uh, is quite good you can feel the bite point but it's still a long actuation way and uh, i'm really feeling it in my leg because after driving this car for a few days uh, my my legs uh, i think the, the the ligaments in the leg are starting to hurt quite a bit maybe also because in order to press the clutch i have to put the foot in a bit of an odd angle because a thing that this car i think is worse than a 911 is that the 911 is more spacious inside. And I wanna say, this car is very spacious. I mean, I could wear a top hat, basically. But this, with the engine being right here, this is as far back as I can go with the seat. And I reckon in a 911, because it has rear seats, I could go further back, have my legs further extended, and be a bit more comfortable. Then again, this is as far as the steering wheel comes out. So if I was further back, I would be doing this, so. Yeah, I guess this is the way the car is. But handling-wise, the car, it feels very solid. The steering is, uh, I'm not somebody who talks a lot about steering, but the steering really feels great. I mean, and it basically goes really where you want it. And you can feel that the car is mid-engine because at some point um, the car just sort of turns around its center line. It's very, a, a weird feeling, but you get used to it because usually the, the the center of gravity in a car is not that central to the car so okay oh yeah this car doesn't even have automatic ac it has manual ac and it's not that great because you, you constantly have to shuffle around and ah, it doesn't even have heated seats this car does not have heated seats so it's it's really a bare bones car but the plastic the dash and everything has held up beautifully. So the car actually, it feels like a new car. I went to pick it up with my cousin and he was like, wow, the car is like new. I bought this car in Lausanne, by the way. This is the third car I buy in Lausanne. My first 911 I bought there and my Lexus I bought in Lausanne. I seem to buy all my cars in Lausanne, so yeah. So let's see. Traction control, it's f seven degree today. Wow, 
over 5,000, it's kind of exhilarating, to be honest. I didn't think that, because I'm not used to revving cars. I have big V8s. And I'm doing very uh, not illegal speeds right now, because they changed the speed limit around here. Bastards. I cannot drive on 10 tenths today because first I'm on the public road and second um, it's fall so there's leaves everywhere, it's wet and it's cold and I'm on summer tires so I have to, I have to drive with some care. Ooh, it is torquey though. Now this car handles well. It doesn't have the, the incredible traction of a GTR of a 996 Turbo because this is not all-wheel drive. But with the rear-wheel drive, with the, um, the, the engine in the middle, it has very good traction and it has fairly wide tires at the back, I think. I have no idea what dimension, but also them being Pilot Sport 4S certainly helps. So I'm quite satisfied with the Cox M in the Cayman S because I want the car to go drive roads like these, mountain roads where you cannot have a car that's too large and also you don't want a car that's too fast because if you rev it out you don't want to be doing 160 or something like that. This if you rev it out in second gear will only do 110 which most likely might still get you a license suspension but I mean at least it won't get you jail time you know and also it being so small and nimble it's it's fantastic. This is the second smallest car I've ever owned. My first car was a Lancia Y with a 1.2 liter that was smaller than this and all the other cars were larger and had larger engines. So yeah. Something I also don't like about the car is these stalks. This is the cruise control and this is a stalk for the uh, trip computer and stuff for the multifunction display and they are sort of in the way sometimes I will bump it with my knee and uh, Other times I will mistaken them for the indicator or something because they are really close one to each other And they are sort of the same shape. So I'm not a fan of those. Oh, yeah another thing this car doesn't have either which I'm not sure if it even was an option back when this car was new, is a limited slip differential. Because yes, again, I bought a sports car without a limited slip differential. I thought only Mercedes was doing things like that, but apparently Porsche is the same. They use some sort of traction control uh, machinery magic to um, simulate a differential, which means the rear brake pads will wear out more than the front ones because they have to do some active things there. But uh, I mean, it's not great. Personally, I prefer a car to have a proper limited slip differential because you just feel it. The way they grip is different. And this one clearly hasn't. Um, then again, this also doesn't have crazy amounts of power. It has 295 horsepower, which I probably haven't, uh, haven't said yet. 295 horsepower out of 3.4 liters. This is the, the, the S engine, the Cayman S engine of the first generation. I think the second generation moved to a different 3.4 liter, which is completely different. This has an M97 engine, so it's basically very closely related to the engine in the in the 997 Porsches, in the naturally aspirated ones, and in the 996s, at least in the 997s in the pre-facelift models. Also, this car does not have a sports steering wheel. It has the regular steering wheel. And I thought this was something that would annoy me, but I really like the steering wheel. It feels great. I like it a lot. Of course, it doesn't have multifunction buttons on the steering wheel, which wasn't that common on these cars. But I think it's a good thing because with the aftermarket Chinese radio, not all the buttons work perfectly. So, yeah, who cares?
it sounds glorious. It sounds glorious. So this is it, my 2008 Porsche Cox, I mean Cayman S, a car um, that's exactly what I wanted, a small sports car that is powerful enough but not ridiculously powerful and that doesn't break the bank. I mean I paid 24,000 francs for it, that's not necessarily cheap, but I mean these were 80, 90,000 when they were new, so yeah. I guess it's still all right and um, if I don't have too many major expenses I should be all right. What do you think of this car? Please comment down below. Did I make a good buy? Was, am I an idiot or um, should I get rid of other cars? Let me know in the comments down below and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more on this car, on the Pontiac, on the Cadillac, on the Lexus, on this guy doing his taxes or whatever, I don't know. And uh, anyway, leave a like if you like this video and share it with somebody who might like it, who might want a car like this because I don't know if this video is actually going to entice them or or keep them away from from it because I am a person who bought a Porsche this is my second Porsche and I'm somebody who doesn't exactly like Porsche so I think it should speak for the car anyway thanks for watching have a nice day bye the sun is killing me <laughs>